there's a reason why I don't try to convince soldiers to extend their contract. I used to, right? I was, uh, I was all about keeping the guys that had value in my organization, right? Just, just like a, a coach in a basketball team or owner trying to, you know, persuade their star players to to stay by giving them fat bonuses, obviously because they have that capability where I don't. Uh, but convincing them and making conditions uh, uh, better or attractive so they will stay. Why I'm not that guy anymore? So go back several years ago. And I was like, man, why, why are you TSing, right? You, you you know so much. You're so valuable to this, and and can persuade them to stay like a recruiter, you know, like a retention issue. And then over time. I realized that I wasn't making those accommodations to make their uh, concerns address to address their concerns, right? I wasn't showing them favoritism because they stayed, right? Meaning making things easier for them or, uh, uh, or giving them uh, false authorities or making them feel like they had more authority than what their rank and position called for. They maintain their reasoning for wanting to get out in the first place. So instead of doing that, what I decided to focus on, and you can say, hey, you're a horrible leader, right? And I'll say I have shortcomings as a leader. And, and instead I'm focused on giving them the tools they need to fight and win. And that sounds so cheesy, but it's absolutely 100% true. Because my philosophy is if a soldier is well-trained, he will have more self-confidence. If he has self-confidence, it will boost uh, his resilience. It will increase his resilience. Meaning when things are tough, he's able to overcome uh, those challenges. And if he has that resilience, overall, he will have a higher morale. And if he has high morale and feels part of something bigger than himself, then he will be more likely to want to stay in the military. And that's my retention tool. So how do I do that? I push to have training to be realistic and difficult where they are pushed to their limits. I'm not always successful, but that's what I'm pushing for. So then they can learn from it and grow and be more physically fit and be more technically and tactically proficient so they can have that confidence that they need to fight and win. Right, because I've never seen a soldier brag about the drill weekends like, oh man, you won't believe what I did this weekend, hun, or mom or whatever. Right? I showed up to drill and I did absolutely nothing. It was so cool. I did nothing but play on my phone and 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 the sham all weekend. Oh, I can't wait for next drill weekend. I've never heard a soldier say that when I was a lower enlisted, when I was a junior NCO, and I have not heard it, you know, uh, as a squad leader platoon sergeant the first time. I have not ever heard a soldier say that. I've never gone on social media in, in this past year and seen, oh, the hurry up and wait game. This is awesome. I am going to re-enlist for six years. I have never seen that. How is making soldiers' lives easier a good retention tool? So I'm not gonna try to convince him to stay when he's already saying, well, this is why I don't wanna stay. Family is more important than what it should be, but I'm not willing to overcome the hurdles uh, that I need to to make sure that I'm paying attention to my family and maintaining uh, my military proficiency or maintaining my commitment with the military in an effective way, right? I'm not, or I want my education goals is my priority, and I'm not willing to sacrifice my spare time to keep my commitment with my unit or my organization, whatever it is. Uh, with my team, my squad, or my position, or my soldier, because I have, you know, I, I have family, right? And they suffer from my military service, and I have to make it up in other ways. Instead of going to bed with my wife, I'm sitting on my government laptop, uh, exchanging emails with the commander. Instead of being out watching my wife's favorite UFC fight with her at a bar, I'm, you know, I drill weekend. Instead of going to my family's weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, I am of performing military duties. I get it. Or instead of getting an extra hour of sleep, you know, a couple years ago, I was preparing for my finals and preparing my training schedule or my, my training plan for my platoon or, or researching 
uh, uh, you know, different things that I could do in my company to prepare for the next 12 months. I, I get it. But because I have vested interests in my organization and what I do and I have that passion, right? And I have been given opportunity to uh, train hard and realistic and push myself in the past and now I have the same desire to push forward and give uh, other soldiers that same opportunity that I've been given. Uh, that's why I'm willing to overcome those things and I have that resilience, right? And I'm willing to sacrifice. And the only way that I feel other soldiers are willing to make the same sacrifice if I give them that desire, inspire them to push harder and give them that training opportunity that's tough and realistic so they can build that resilience just like I was built, right? Uh, the opportunities that I was given coming up. That's why I'm a horrible retention NCO when it comes time to re-enlist. Because if up to that point, I have not done my job effectively, there is no reason why I should try to persuade a soldier to re-enlist. I have already failed him, right? I have already failed him and his leadership to provide him the tough, realistic training so he can build confidence and, 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 and feel positive and brag about what he did that drill weekend. So then he can be more resilient and overall have higher morale. I have failed them. So then when I lose one, I go, okay, I need to push harder. I need to push my subordinate leaders to stop with this garbage of trying to build bonding time through sitting around and playing with their phones, right? You wanna play spades during drill weekend? Roger, hey, that hilltop is about six clicks away. Here's your packing list. Go ahead and put that stuff on grab that freaking log right there and take your platoon up that hill and then go ahead and set up a freaking spades or a dominoes table and you can bivouac there away from the rest of the unit and then while you while you at it if you have extra time downtime go ahead and pull out your fms and run some drills you know just just read through it and give little classes while you're there overnight do a bonfire right and then tomorrow morning before chow just hike back those six clicks and uh, we'd be good to go. There's your bonding time. That's what I should be doing. That's what I try to do. That's what I push to do. And that's the space, the, the opportunity that I try to create for my platoons and my soldiers. And if I do that effectively, when ETS time comes around, that soldier is more inclined to re-enlist because you remember about those days that he went home and bragged to his family about playing spades at a hilltop overnight over a bonfire. As opposed to the days that he sat at the drill chef floor playing on his phone and playing the hurry up and wait game. Hurry up and wait game is fairly to plan by the leadership, that's all it is, all right? Hopefully this all makes sense. You don't have to necessarily believe in what I believe, but it, it's, it's, I just want, I want to give you a perspective, a different, an alternative to a topic that's very, you know, dear to me. <laughs> it is pretty much what it comes down to, all right? Thank you for driving home with me and make sure you check me out on next rock time. Peace. And hopefully I won't crash.